Okay, now. Uh, I have someone in my neighborhood who uh, messaged me last night and they're talking about downsizing. Um, okay. So they're, they're wanting to know the value of their home. And I said, sure, it'd be a privilege. Let me do some research, I'll get back to you. Then I started thinking in this world of, I can sell it myself because this is so easy. I, I don't know, like, do I give them the value and then just give them a presentation at the same time? Or what, I mean, what do I give? No, them? You, you, <laughs> you, you mandate that they meet with you in order to get what they want, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's go, let's, um, you know, listen, there's a lot of different, um, it, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can sell your home. And there are a lot of different, um, you know, ways that we can approach it in terms of uh, marketing and timing and condition and accessibility. And so the best thing to do is let me come over for half hour, 45 minutes. Um, I'll kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on in the marketplace right now. We'll share some statistics. I've got a handful of questions for you so I can better understand your situation. And then we can look at the data together and I'll make a, uh, I'll give you my opinion on price. But keep in mind, unless you list the home, this is not what I would say, but um, unless you list the home today, then the price could be totally different tomorrow, right? So this is a rough idea of what the price is if we were to list the home and market it today. But if you, um, you know, take three months or something to get the home ready, or you're not ready to sell until the summer, we're gonna have to reanalyze all this data again, which is no big deal. Um, but yeah. just understand that it's a it's a pretty wild market right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully that was helpful for everybody. Let's do a tiny bit of uh, housekeeping real fast. Don't forget, I just posted a link for Chartmaster's presentation today um, uh, in the announcements page. That'll be run by Andy and Leslie. Um, that's what we uh, looked at about two weeks ago. Um, uh, same same chart, same data. Um, but you just get a different opinion on the, or, you know, kind of a different presentation on the data. So I would encourage everyone to join that. That's from 9.30 to 11 today. Now, pop quiz. If you go to that today, what do you have to do later in the day that you would normally do between 9.30 and 11? Hey, Jen. Hey, Jen. Oh, man. Oh. That's a great answer. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> By the way, if you if if somebody at Keller Williams ever asks you a question and you don't know the answer, just say Legion. There's a very good chance you're right. Okay. Okay. Um, so please make sure uh, you make that a part of your day. And if you do, uh, make sure that that doesn't mean that you uh, forget about Legion for the day. Okay. Okay. Anyone want to share any uh, success stories real fast before we get going? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I want to make sure today's topic is winning the day and winning the day looks a lot different for a lot of different people. Um, and one of the questions, uh, oh, by the way, we are, um, I've sent out a link um, several times now for uh, booking a 15 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of discovery session, if you will, with everybody, even if you're getting one-on-ones right now, I want to do one on top of that um, so that we can ask a series of different questions. Okay. Um, when, Candace and I are in the process of, of tweaking the program a little bit um, based on some of the uh, recommendations that you guys have made and based on kind of the attendance at some of the things that we thought were gonna be helpful and maybe we just need to offer something slightly different. So um, we, we're gonna be adding more stuff as opposed to taking stuff away. So don't worry one bit about that. Um, we're also gonna be developing a program that is um, somewhat like set, like a next level, if you will, right? So once you get to a, a certain point and, and several of the people on the call right now are, are, are pretty much there, um, this is, a, excuse me, a program that might be a, a better match for you. So we focus on, you know, continue to focus on higher level stuff. So we should have that in place within the next couple of days where we're just putting the finishing touches on it. Um, I Just a, a quick friendly reminder, I am meeting with Aubrey at 930 today and they the first thing he asked me is, how's your group doing? And I know there's a lot of blanks on the tracking sheet. So if you are behind in your tracking, um, I very, very much appreciate you taking a minute to update that for us. Okay. Um, one of the things that we're going to talk about at the one-on-ones is to get even more clear on what we're trying to accomplish each year and therefore what we're trying to accomplish each day. 
And I want to share, hopefully I haven't tried sharing my screen in a few days, but let's see if this doesn't, um, if this messes up, hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, I want to start with this document here. Okay, this is something called the Daily Success Tracker. Clearly, I am not a designer, but that's okay. It is in doc format or um, what do you call it? Google Doc format. And you can download it and pull it off of the Google Drive and then edit it however you want. Okay, my initial idea for this document was you think to yourself, what is a what does a great day look like, right? What are we trying to um, accomplish each day that that takes you to the next level? Remember, the two things that we want to focus the most on is spending time each day learning and spending time each day speaking to people in your database or in the community. Okay, so a successful day is doing both of those. Even if you got five minutes of real estate. Give it two and a half minutes to learn something and two and a half minutes to make a call, a call or two, okay? So I just wrote a couple of things that I think would be helpful for you to do every single day. Open command, review your goals and your 411, do your social media activity, take a look at your pipeline, acknowledge whether you did your one thing or not, right? And complete your daily tracking. This, this is meant to be kind of like a daily journal. Once you get it the way that it, you want it to read, you print out a stack of them and that becomes your... The, the piece of paper that you carry around with you all day long. So if you're at the gym or the grocery store or the park, or you're picking up your kids from school or whatever it is, this is with you because everything that you learn about somebody or new person that you meet, this is where you can record their information in the meantime. Okay. So it, it prompts you to uh, identify who the contacts you made were. It, it encourages you to put in the number of uh, contacts, database ads, pipeline ads, the stuff that we track weekly encourages you to track that a daily. Okay. What did I learn today? Okay. What went well and what could I improve? These are great topics to bring up in launch mastermind, growth, growth mastermind. These are also great topics to bring in with your small groups or in your uh, group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching. So take note of how you can improve each and every day. And then I have this section here, which is for promises made. So remember, um, basically every single day, we're just making promises after promises after promises, right? Oh, I'll send you this, you know, data to review. Oh, I'll introduce you to my roofer. Oh, I'll introduce you to my lender. Oh, I'll send you the form to file homestead exemption, whatever it is. Basically all day long, we're making promises. So this is a great uh, mechanism, in my opinion, let's keep it super simple, right? What promises did I make and did I complete them? So at the end of the day, when you put, a, when you put work away and you go focus on, let's just call it not work, right? The question is, is have you fully executed every single promise you made? Okay. If you're going to make a commitment, let's, let's do it. Okay. So this is a document um, that I would encourage you guys to, to use. This is on uh, the Google drive and I will download a copy of it right now and upload it um, to make it easy for you. Um, and I added a little John Maxwell quote here that says everything worthwhile is uphill and no one accidentally goes uphill, okay? So Aubrey said something really, uh, I'm really glad he said it yesterday. And I think it went without saying, but he said, he said it anyway, and I, and I heard it, and I, and I um, really thought it was well said, which is every single person that walked the stage yesterday um, has worked really hard to earn the right to walk that stage, right? There, there is no place where like buyers and sellers fall out of the sky and those were the lucky ones whose house they fell on, right? Those people went and made the phone calls, they made the contacts, they studied the market, they practiced, right? And therefore they've had great success and they're now they're being recognized for it. One, one other thing, I don't know if you guys caught this, but in the, in the award ceremony yesterday, um, did you guys notice when they called up the old ALC, the 2020 ALC? That was like the fourth or fifth time that all those people had been on stage, right? So taking on leadership opportunities and being a leader in the market center and helping others, it doesn't take away from your business. It's supposed to grow your business. And that's exactly what happened for the 
Heather Hares and the Cynthia's um, and the Kiri Veals and the rest of the, you know, the, the uh, men and women that were on that ALC. Um, okay, so I am posting this in the announcements page as we speak. And I would encourage you to tweak it however you need to tweak it to make it a good daily journal for you. Does anyone have any questions on this document? Okay. I'm in the process of when we meet every one of us one-on-one, uh, -on -one, this is one of the things that we're gonna be speaking about. Can you guys see this right here? This is gonna be a little bit of an easier um, way of digesting the MREA2 document that uh, that we've reviewed all together. And uh, Aubrey and the leadership team challenged Candace and I to create some models around what it takes to cap in a variety of time periods. So I just want to look at this area over here for a second. Um, <clears throat> we, we talked about capping in three months, capping in six months, and capping in 12 months. Capping, by the way, is gross commission income of about $51,000, okay? So even if you cap, even if you cap and you're in coaching, I mean, let's, let's do some quick math, right? You're still, you're netting before taxes or expenses 23 grand. So I'm just going to go out on a hunch and say, I don't think anybody got into this business to make $23,000. Is that fair to say? Is there anybody that would be completely satisfied making $23,000? Good. You guys passed the test. Okay. So that means that we at least want to be in one of these top two groups right here, cap in three months or cap in six months. Okay. Now, not to bore you with all the math, don't worry. I figured it out and I got Excel to help me figure it out. But I've been combining some of the KW research with our group's data. And I have determined that on average, it takes 60 contacts to book an appointment, or I'm sorry, to hold an appointment. Okay. Remember there's about 70% um, set to hold ratio. So 30% of the appointments that you set guys will probably not even hold. But contacts to a held appointment, I believe takes about 60 contacts. Okay. Now, um, I also have uh, updated the some of the conversion ratios. And it is my opinion that the average person in this group needs 142 contacts to have a closing. Okay. So remember we go contact, Appointment set, appointment held, home under contract, get paid, right? And there's fallout the entire time. So according to my math, if you have 142 two-way conversations with a human being about real estate, you should put somebody through that process and get paid one time. Make sense? Okay. So if you desire to cap in, uh, oh wait, this is, this is actually backward. This should be capping in 12 months right here. And this should be capping in three months right here. Okay. So oops, if we want to cap in, um, let's look at the three months first, that's a 24 unit business. We believe that you'll need 3,400 contacts over the course of the year. And I just put that we would like to work 250 days out of the year. Is that okay? 250 days. So that would be 68% um, of the year. Is that cool? Is that cool with everybody? It's plenty of vacation time. If that's the case, all you need to do is contact 14 people a day. Okay. If instead you want to cap in six months, you just need to contact seven a day. And if you want to cap during the course of the year, you simply need to have four conversations with human beings about real estate a day. Is there anybody that doesn't think that's possible? Okay. Now, if you are beating some of these ratios, seller appointment, appointment to take in, take in to close, buyer appointment to take in, buyer take in to close, if you're beating 65% on that, you even have to talk to less people. That make sense? So um, part of winning the day is knowing what winning looks like, right? You guys have heard me talk a lot about this, this idea, which is 
for a long time as I was building my business, I never really knew what winning each day was, right? I didn't understand the math behind it, or that my the people around me weren't talking about business, et cetera. It took me coming to Keller Williams to really, really understand that, okay? And what I realized is that if I knew what winning each day looked like, then I could put work away and go hang out with my family and my kids and not be overly concerned with whether I'm on, well, I already knew I was on track, so I didn't have to stress about work, right? And then when I could be present when I was working, because I knew I had to stay on track, and my family knew that, and then on, on an unusual amount of time, I think for a salesperson, I was spending away from work because I was really efficient doing work in a short amount of time. And work is learning and hitting these numbers. Does that make sense? So you also have to track your daily activities to say, if I talk to 14 people a day, right? An average of let's say 20, 21 days out of the month. Uh, one sec, Greta. Um, one, uh, 20 to 21 days out of the month. Am I producing at these ratios? So we got to double check to make sure that you are, you know, kind of in line with what we believe is possible. Greta. Uh, my question, just to, just for clarity, is when you hit those numbers, you're capping, but you're not making any money. So you have to go above and beyond to make money, right? What do you mean you're not making any money? Well, I'm, I'm hitting the numbers that I need in order to pay my cap. So okay. when I pay my cap and my expenses, I'm really not making any money. I have to go above and beyond this to actually earn a living. Correct. Um, I, I would ex I would think so. Um, right. I mean, we we have you know roughly two thirds of the most market centers are full of non cappers though, right? So there's a lot of people out there that are not hitting even these numbers, right? So I'll tell you if I'm trying to decide how I want to say this. I just want to make sure I have this clarity. is a really stressful job, you guys. I think the only reason we should put up with what we put up with is if we're going to make good money, right? And we're going to get a chance to go out there and help a lot of families. And so if, if you're only going to sell three or four homes a year, um, you know, it, it, when, the, when the checks come in, you may say, gosh, there's a lot of people that got their hand in this check, right? But if you're going to sell, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 homes a year, you just write a check for $18,000 and that's that. And you make everything on top of that, right? So yes, if you're barely going to cap, most people would say you're not making that, that great of a living, but I'm not here to judge that, right? Um, if, if you're, and, and that's another thing, Greta, is you got to go through your own personal financial situation and your own personal goals and where you are and where versus where you want to be and say, I, in order for me to feel good about moving this business forward, I need to sell X number of homes. So coach, how many people do I need to speak to every day to sell this number of homes? Because that's, I'm going to go do that right now. Right. And if the answer to that would be, Hey, I want to sell 24 homes. Right. Remember if we sell 24 homes at an average of $10,000 a pop, that's $240,000. You pay KW 18, right? You pay coaching uh, 10 and you're at 212, right? That's plenty of money. I mean, I don't wanna say that's plenty of money, but that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good income, right? So this thing can grow pretty fast once you start taking all of your cash. Does that make sense? It does. I just wanted clarity around, um, like these are minimum hurdles, right? Um, maybe not for everybody. Right. I mean, I've talked to some people that I say, what are your goals? And they say, I just want to like, I just want to have a deal this year. Right. I just want to learn a lot. I say, okay, well, we're going to throw you into the, you know, lion's den and you're going to learn plenty, but you're also going to get paid a bunch of times. Is that cool? <laughs> right? right. You can't learn by sitting behind the computer screen all day. You got to go out there and talk to people. So yes, if you, if you only desire to gross $50,000 of income, then yeah, you can go talk to four people a day and you'll probably get there. My question to you is, 
are you reaching your potential with giving that giving that type of workload to yourself? You see what Correct. I'm saying? Absolutely. So, I mean, another way to think about it is 142 contacts. If I talk to 142 people this week, let's say, then I should be uh, I should have 50 closings by the end of the year because I should be able to earn myself a closing every single week. You see what I'm saying? So it's you can look at it a lot of different ways. Like if, for example, I said, hey, Greta, I got a job for you, okay? And you can uh, net prior to most expenses over $200,000 this year for just simply doing this job. You can work whenever you want with whoever you want, okay? You can work from wherever you want and you simply need to talk to 14 people a day, 250 times out of the year, and convert at the average clip of a regular old realtor, would you do that? I mean, wouldn't everyone say, holy shit, is that, is that for real? Like, I can really do that? That's a job, right? Excuse me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, guys, y'all have that job right now. You got your... You got a license, you're hooked up with a broker, you're in coaching. I mean, you're you're well on the way. Okay, what what are we any questions on this? Are we what what are we um is this surprising to you? Is this more work or less work than you expected it to be? Walk me through what's on your mind right now. Come on now, come on. It's bad enough I'm looking at a bunch of black squares. Trying to be easy on y'all. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate how um, you're, you're breaking everything down to the minute detail. And I do believe that if you just follow it to the T, then you'll get the results that you want. That's exactly right. Success is simple. It's not, it's just not easy, right? So it's, you know, again, there's a, um, the number one agent in all of Keller Williams, his name is Ben Kinney. He's out of um, Bellingham, Washington, which is a little north of Seattle. And um, he's just a, he's just a brilliant guy. Okay. And he says a lot of times agents will overcomplicate the business to justify their inaction. Right. It's really simple. Just go talk to, you know, 14 people a day. You'll make 200 grand. What's the, what's the problem here? I've never heard of anybody lead generating and dying as a result, ever, okay? Not even once. So if you don't have the time to do that, then tell me what you do have the time to do. And by the way, let's probably examine how you spend your time because I guarantee you're playing on Facebook for as long as it would take to call at least four or seven people a day, right? Did that sound, did that kind of, like Andy says sometimes, man, that felt like a stab in the front. Have y'all ever heard that line? <clears throat> okay, what else did we learn from here? Thank you, Scott. So good to see you today, sir. Okay, what else are we thinking? What else do we learn today? <clears throat> so um, just to remind you, everything, uh, when you get this chart, we're gonna read you some of the goal sheets. When you get this chart, you can play around with all of the um, uh, price ranges and commission percentages and all that kind of stuff. So for example, I have, um, I have it broken down. I did it in two different ways, but I said, um, if you had average price points of 350 for buyers and sellers, 3% commission on either side, half of your business would be buyers, half would be sellers. You convert at these ratios right here, 65% appointment to take in and 65% take in to close for both buyers and sellers and 60 contacts per appointment held. If you were to work 11 months out of the year and 20 days, this is a little different calculation than over here. If you wanna help 12 families, nine people a day, okay? If you wanna help 50 families, 33 people a day. Most likely at that point, you're going to have some help. You might have a buyer's agent. Is it possible that two people could go find 33 people to talk to in one day? That'd be pretty nice, wouldn't it? 
So we're going to have these formulas in place where you can play around with the stuff in yellow and um, kind of create the exact model that you want. OK. Um, now, I just want to throw in one more thing. Winning the day is not just about like what you do for your job, right? What you do to earn money. So I want you also to think about what else is important to me that I do every single day. What are, and I want you to, um, I'm starting to kind of get more and more comfortable with this idea, which is this book, Atomic Habits. He says, I don't like talking about goals. I like to talk more about standards, right? The standard for the Michael Gould real estate sales organization is we speak to X number of people a day. And if nine o'clock rolls around and I hadn't spoken to that number of people, what are you going to do? You have a choice. You can either do something that most people would be like, dude, you're a nut, which is like, I don't know, go to Kroger or go to Target and walk the aisles until you talk to enough people about real estate to hit your daily goals. Or you just say, yeah, it's raining outside today. I don't need to do that. <laughs> and enough of that, you know, was that, oh, thanks for laughing, Bianca. Hopefully that was a laugh, not like a speaker thing. Um, but uh, I guess it was a speaker thing. Um, you know, or you could just kind of let yourself down and say, hey, it's not a standard, right? So what are the standards of your organization? And what are the standards of not work, so to speak, right? So do you have a standard to, you know, exercise every day? Do you have a standard to, you know, call your best friend every day? Do you have a standard to, you know, I, I, I haven't been fantastic at this. I haven't vocalized that it's a standard. I've vocalized that it was a goal. Um, I wanted to, uh, when I came home from work every day, I wanted to take 10 minutes and hang out with each kid, just me and the kid, right? So I'd hang out with my daughter and we'd talk about whatever she wanted to talk about. And I'd ask her what she learned today and ask her what she wants to learn about tomorrow and all these kind of things. And it was just our little private time, right? Do the same thing with my son, right? So what are the standards of your world, right? What else is important to you, right? Do you, another example of a standard could be wishing happy birthday to everyone on your Facebook profile or LinkedIn profile, right? So think about your standard could be, I do a minute of push-ups every day. So think about what are your standards because um, that's what's really gonna drive the business forward, okay? Now, I haven't shared my 411 with you guys in a while. I probably should do that really soon, but there has been something on my 411 for about two years that I did for the first time yesterday. I'm real proud of myself, which is I hired a personal trainer and that dude worked me like I have never been worked last night. Okay. And I tried to quit on him. And he looked at me, he's like, come on, man, you've got this. He's like, you know how to do this. Right. So I just wanted to share that, like, even if something's been on your list for a long time and you keep finding um, excuses or something else to prioritize, like, you just got to take a step sometimes. And I just went for it and I said, I'm tired of looking at this freaking thing. And I just did it. You see what I'm saying? So what are you tired of looking at? What have you been putting to the side forever? Right? Is it business related? Is it family related? Is it financial related? You know, give that some thought today. Okay. And that's how you're going to win the day. It's figuring out what makes you like click and then just go do it because we're all trying, we're all on a path towards something. It's either mediocrity or it's exactly where you want to be. And you're in charge. Does that make sense? All right, you guys. I'm going to hop on the uh, leadership puddle real fast. We're, we're meeting a little early, so we can probably all go to Chart Masters. So I hope you all will choose to participate in that today. And like I said, if you would be so kind to uh, put in your numbers, that would make my appointment with Aubrey a lot more pleasant. And uh, congratulations, everyone, to uh, for, for being at the ceremony yesterday and for the awards you won. I'm so 
So honored to be in business with you. So have a wonderful day. Thanks, Bill.